Hello, this is Mr. Buffington from Simplify Academy, and today we are comparing ratios. Let's do it. We're going to talk about comparing ratios, what it looks like. Then we're going to discuss the common denominator way of comparing ratios. And then we're going to show how cross multiplying can be used to compare ratios. First of all, let's talk about these symbols. These are the symbols we use to compare numbers. This first symbol means less than. This symbol means greater than, and this symbol means equal or equal to. The way we would use it is to write out um, an expression like this. One is less than two. We call this an inequality because they're not equal. This is another inequality. Three is greater than two. And this, two-thirds equals two-thirds, is an example of an equation because they are equal to each other. But those are the three symbols that we're going to use to compare ratios. The easiest way to compare ratios is if they have a common denominator already. Because you could pretty easily fill in this blank. You know whether one-fourth or three-fourths is greater. Which one's greater? If you want a visual, there it is. I filled in one-fourth on the left and three-fourths on the right. You can clearly see that three-fourths is greater than one-fourth. Or in other words, one-fourth is less than three-fourths. However, with unlike denominators, it's not that easy. We can't really compare them and just fill in the blank. Adding a visual doesn't really help because um, two-thirds and three-quarters. Thirds are different than quarters, so it's hard to see exactly which is greater, which is less. So those aren't really helpful, and we're basically left with this question mark. Now, I'm going to show you a way to make two fractions have common denominator. It's not necessarily the smallest denominator, but it will always give you a denominator. And that's that you take each fraction and multiply it times the denominator from the other fraction. So I'll show you what that means. So 2 thirds, I'm going to multiply that times 4. 4 is the denominator of the other fraction, 3 over 4. Notice I'm multiplying that denominator from the second fraction, 4, times both the top and bottom of this fraction. My second fraction, I'll multiply times 3 on both the top and bottom. And again, the reason for this is that the bottom of the first fraction, or the denominator of 2 thirds, is 3. What this does, when we get rid of our visual here, what this does is it gives us, on the denominator, look at the bottom of the fraction, 3 times 4 on the left, and 4 times 3 on the right. Both will give us 12. In other words, we have a common denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 3 is 9. Notice the denominators are the same. So we really could now get rid of everything else and just compare 8 twelfths to 9 twelfths. That helps us know that 8 twelfths is less than 9 twelfths, therefore, 2 thirds is less than 3 quarters. That's how you can do it. Let's practice with that. I want you to try that one out. Convert these two ratios to having a common denominator, then compare them. Pause and practice. Go for it. Hey, welcome back. Um, first fraction, 3 fifths. I'm going to multiply that times 7 over 7. And 4 sevenths, I'm going to multiply times 5 over 5. Notice the first fraction on the left, I'm multiplying times 7 because that was the denominator of the second fraction. The second fraction over there on the right gets multiplied times 5 because that was on the bottom of the first fraction. This gives us a common denominator of 35. And you can see I have 21 over 35 on the left and 20 over 35 on the right. These fractions are very, very close in value, but the fraction on the left is larger because 21 is larger than 20.
All right, now let's think about, um, let's go back in time a little bit and think about cross multiplying. When we did cross multiplying, remember we set up um, a set of ratios and then we multiplied the numbers across. I did 18 times four is 72 and six times 12 is 72, right? Think about that for a second. What exactly are we doing? Well, well, we are multiplying by the denominator from the other fraction, right? We're multiplying four times 18. 18 was the denominator from the other fraction. And we're multiplying 12 times six, which was the denominator from the other fraction. Now rewind back to our previous example with comparing ratios and ask ourselves, what are we doing here? Well, we're multiplying by the denominator of the other fraction. Hmm, we're basically doing cross multiplying. All right, that's all we're doing, cross multiplying. So yet, let's use cross multiplying to compare fractions. This is how it would look. Let's try it out. If I had the ratios of 5 eighths and 7 tenths, and I was asked to compare them using cross multiplying, I'd simply multiply. 10 times 5 is 50, 8 times 7 is 56, and now I can put in that symbol that 50 is less than 56, therefore 5 eighths is less than 7 tenths. Now, if you're not entirely comfortable with that right now, that's okay. We can go ahead and do the rest of this step, which would be to multiply 8 times 10 to get 80, and then 8 times 10 to get 80 over here, and make them into fractions with common denominator of 80. You can do that, it's absolutely fine. But the more you practice this, the more you'll become comfortable without writing in that denominator at all. In fact, let's try practicing it without the denominators in this example here. Go ahead and pause and practice. Try that one out. Without writing in the denominators, compare those fractions. Go. Here we're going to cross multiply. 15 times 6 is 90. 9 times 12 is 108. So therefore, we would put in the less than symbol, and we would know 6 ninths is less than 12 fifteenths. That's it. There we go. Pause and practice. I want you to use cross multiplying to compare these ratios 7 to 8 and 11 to 14. With this one, you'll have one extra step of writing them out in fraction form. All right, here they are in fraction form. We're going to do some cross multiplying 14 times 7, 8 times 11, and we can simply compare 98 is greater than 88, therefore, 7 eighths is greater than 11 fourteenths. Another practice problem here, try that one out, seven or six to seven and 12 to 14. All right, we do cross multiplying, 14 times six, 12 times, or seven times 12, and we get 84 on both sides. What does that mean? These ones are actually equal to each other. They are equivalent ratios. And we've already known how to do that. We've checked equivalent ratios using cross multiplying a lot of times. All right, so a couple things to remember. Common denominators are the easiest way to compare ratios. So you can cross multiply to find and compare ratios. It's basically the same step as finding common denominator, only without the denominator. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.